Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. My name is John and today I'm doing an emergency repot of my philodendron ring of fire. Now I wanted to do a video about this because emergency repots can be pretty tricky because sometimes it's really that one thing that's going to save your plant and other times it's just going to be the final blow that takes your plant all the way to an early demise. So it's always kind of a gamble, but I wanna offer you some guidance as to why I'm choosing to do this repot now, and hopefully that will help you with your future plants if you happen to have any that are struggling for whatever reason. Okay, so here's the backstory on this particular plant. I received it almost a year ago, uh, maybe nine months ago. In the winter time, it had three leaves that were each about eight, inch long, eight inches long, I would guess. Slowly it started losing those leaves as it was acclimating to my home in the winter and then eventually started growing new leaves, but then it mutated. And so instead of growing more bigger, bigger leaves, um, it just kept putting out new growth tips. So at one point there was probably like 50 or 60 new growth tips on this plant, um, which I thought was cool because it's going to make a very bushy plant eventually but it actually then just continued putting out new growth tips. So it just always had these tiny, tiny new baby leaves everywhere. Then maybe a couple months ago, some of them started dying off and I thought the plant was just sort of prioritizing certain leaves and choosing you know, which ones it wanted to continue feeding into. But this plant has continued declining and there's been a sharp, sharp decline recently. And it's growing in LECA, so the pH is balanced in the water, it's filtered water, the nutrients are very well controlled and measured. So I really don't know what's going on, but I know that something is happening with those roots and so I wanna get it out of there ASAP. Now, I'm moving this into perlite in a jar, so I've had really great success with that, not only just with propagating, but also for growing things. So here's my little example. I've been growing this philodendron clouded leaf in here for a couple months maybe, and it's just doing so, so well. It's in a humidity bin under some LEDs, which is where this is gonna go. Although I ran out of perlite, I bought a new bag, and as you can see, this stuff is huge. It's massive. So actually this is pretty similar in size to the LECA, so I'm not sure how much of different it's, difference it's gonna make, um, but I'm gonna go with that and we'll see how it goes just to offer you some guidance for when an emergency repot might be necessary. If your plant starts struggling suddenly and you can't figure out why, that could be a really good time. But if you have a plant that's just been slowly declining for months and months and months and now it seems like it's really struggling and maybe it's on the brink of death, that's probably not going to be able to handle the stress of a repot at that point. Now, of course, the time of year is very important. Now that we're going into winter, um, we're in mid-fall here, it's not the best time to be doing this, but I do have LEDs. I have some grow lights and some humidity bins set up, so this one's going to, it's not gonna know that it's winter time, so it's gonna bounce back pretty quickly. And I would definitely recommend that anytime you're doing some sort of emergency repot, you try to give your plant extra light, extra humidity, just to help it through that transition. So again, if you see a healthy plant all of a sudden have a sharp decline, that's a great candidate for an emergency repot, but a very slow, gradual decline that's been dragging on for a long time, it might not be um, able to handle that stress. Anyways, luckily this is in LECA. It's quite easy to pull a plant out of LECA and check on the roots. Um, you're probably not gonna damage the roots much, if at all, when doing that. So I'm sure this is gonna handle it no problem. Obviously something is going on with this, so I think it's gonna really appreciate a change of environment. So let's get it out of here and let's see what happens. Okay, so really quick, let's, let me just show you what's happening. So you can see there's quite a lot of yellowing leaves, some brown leaves, but what I want you to really see, we'll zoom in here. I'm not sure how well you can see, you can see a lot of this sort of dying growth underneath. You can see that there's lots of growth tips down there. And over here, as you look from the side, everywhere you see a leaf, that's actually a growth tip. Now here's this super cool philodendron clouded leaf. And just to show you these roots here, it's been growing tons and tons of happy roots here in this mason jar of perlite. And since it's in a humidity bin, these aerial roots are going nuts. So that's what I'm going for with this, 
with this one here. Okay, so we're gonna let me pop this water meter out of here. I've already dumped the uh, cash pot out. So I'm just gonna lay this down and sort of gently ease this thing out of here. <laughs> it might get a little loud. All right, so can you see these? Um, there's some roots that have kind of rotted off, but actually that's kind of standard because these were probably there when I first put it in. And then eventually the plant started growing these hydro roots, which are looking okay. You can see the stem down here is not looking great, but it's all right. Well, yeah, I just, I'd have to call this root system average to slightly below average. I was hoping for better, but definitely feel good about this plant being saveable. So I'm just gonna tease these last little balls out here as gently as I can. Okay, so let's see if you can see all these growth tips now. Like, look at, look at all of that. Those are just all new growth tips. Sorry, I can't get that close. Um, pretty insane, actually. So, not in great shape, uh, but it's still alive, so feeling good about it. All right. So what I learned is that these leaves were falling off, obviously, because the root system is struggling. What I don't know and might never know is why um, was the root system struggling. So that's gonna still be a mystery, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna hold this up here. All right, we got it. Um, that was kind of difficult, but I ended up just filling this other jar with the perlite and pouring it in as I was holding that. It worked, but uh, yeah, this larger perlite is definitely a little harder to work with um, than the regular stuff, but maybe it's gonna be great. All right, so let me show you this. So you can see that the roots go to about here so I'm gonna have the water just a little below that. My plan is to leave like a half inch gap or so. Um, this is just regular filtered water, drinking water from my kitchen. So I like this thing because I can fill this up very slowly. Because if you overfill, it's just gonna be a little pain to pour it out. And I want to get all of it nice and wet. Wow, so the perlite is absorbing this so well, none of that is making it to the bottom yet. All right, so the roots are here and the water level is here. So actually I can pretty much fit my finger in between, which is gonna be good. Now this is, it's not gonna need any water. Um, I'm not gonna need to add anything because there's gonna be high enough humidity that this is just not gonna dry up. Although we'll see how much of this the perlite absorbs. But yeah, I wanna wait until I see some nice, white, fuzzy new growth on those roots before I start adding nutrients because I just want this thing to um, have a nice gentle transition into its new home. Okay, so all together, please just take a moment. Imagine this plant just becoming so healthy and happy and beautiful. All right, great, so that's it. So I will be back with an update video, hopefully in a couple of weeks to a month, um, as soon as things have started moving along. So I hope this helps you. Um, just to recap, yeah, it really depends on how far gone your plant is and how long it has been struggling. A plant that suddenly starts struggling probably has plenty of energy to handle a repot and that might be just what it needs. Although of course it's tricky diagnosing plants because so many different things will cause that plant to exhibit similar symptoms. But if you had a plant that's been really, really struggling for a long time, I would probably recommend that you just try and set up a grow area with lights, boost the humidity and just leave it and try and 
get it growing as much as possible before you try to repot it. All right, so I think that's gonna do it for me in this video. So thanks again for watching. If you found this informative or helpful, please do me a favor and hit that like button and definitely reach out to me in the comments. I'd love to connect with all of you. And as always, have a wonderful day and happy growing. I will see you in the next video. All right, peace.